Hey everyone, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to take a quick look at the Garmin Verb Edit software. Now this is a completely free tool and editing software that we can use with the Garmin Verb XE and X and probably the Elite and the normal Verb from last gen. Uh, you're going to download it actually from Garmin's website. Again, it's completely free. It's going to show us all of our map data. It's going to be an easy way for us to display that G-Metrics data that the camera's recording. So let's jump right into that. What we're going to do is we're going to create a project by pressing create video. So we'll call this the helicopter demo, since we'll be showing a lot of our helicopter trip here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to import a lot of the footage. Now, if you had imported a bunch of days worth of clips beforehand, they'll actually show up down here. And when you go into your project, they'll actually already be in your media library. But since we're trying to start as fresh as possible, I've kind of cleared everything out. Now, if you hadn't imported your footage already to an external hard drive, you can plug in your uh, Garmin Verb and just start importing immediately. The camera should recognize it. Otherwise, we'll just go into our sort of external here and we'll just start importing everything. Now, real quickly, I'll just point out that when you're, uh, when you're filming time lapses, it's actually going to save the file name in uh, sequence names here. So you'll see verb 00813, and everything that's 88 is part of the same sequence. Uh, 89 is a completely different sequence, 90 is a different sequence. Uh, the nice thing about this is, is if we're importing sequences into something like Premiere uh, or Photoshop, it's not actually going to import all of my photos as one giant time sequence. It's actually going to split them up into individual sequences. So, uh, oops, just cancel that here. We'll just start to import again. And uh, yeah, see we have our normal single photos here. They don't have the dash indicating that they're part of a sequence. And uh, another cool thing uh, with the Garmin Verb is that when you're filming on multiple days, let's say you format the card in between days, with some other cameras like the Sony Action Camera, when you format the card, it'll start the naming process over again. So it's possible on other cameras to end up with um, with a file name the same as the day before, but with the Garmin Verb XE, we'll actually end up with uh, this day being ended, and then we'll format the card, and then we'll actually keep going with the same file name structure. So we'll never actually repeat a file name, which means when we kind of do a multiple days, we could drag everything into one folder, and we don't have to worry about renaming anything or things accidentally getting overridden. So it's kind of a very uh, smart way to organize your files, and it's just worth pointing out. So we'll import all of our helicopter footage here. It's about 19 clips. Now, even though we're filming on 19 clips, as long as we have the camera powered on during our adventure, it's recording all of that G-Metrics data into one file. So instead of having to sync 19 files with 19 different uh, files of G-Metrics data, we actually import one G-Metrics data file, and it automatically knows to sync itself to all 19 of these clips. Now, unfortunately, we have worked with these clips before, so the verb edit will automatically attach it to these clips, but we'll desync it from one just to show you how you would apply the G-Metrics data to your clip. So we'll press OK here, and everything's going to show up in my import uh, in our media library here. Now, unfortunately, we can't access any of this stuff here until we drag it onto the timeline. So this little pill here with the lightning bolt, that actually means the G-Metrics data is already tied to our footage here. I've tried to desync it, um, and short of deleting the actual file, I couldn't figure out. I even renamed the folder name. It's saving it somewhere else. I'm not 100% sure but uh, we can relink it. So we'll drag these all into the timeline, and even though none of these files are in the right order that they were filmed, uh, our timeline is actually displaying it in the time of our adventure here, which is great. I don't know if it's doing that through the, uh, the G-Metrics data, but this was the beginning of my flight, and this was the end of my flight. So what we'll do is we'll actually go to, uh, let's say, this clip here where we're doing this sort of banking turn. Uh, and we're going to go to the G-Metrics here, and we're actually just going to remove this file. Again, it is already synced up, but I just kind of want to show you how to do this fresh. So we've removed that. We'll press Import. And uh, this is our previous import, so if we had imported all of our G-Metrics data from that day, we would actually see it in a list here. And this is our sort of our roadmap here from the day we went. However, we're just going to go to My Computer. We're going to go to Browse. Uh, and it's actually going to show up, uh, if you import your entire Garmin folder, you'll have the DCIM folder that actually has all of your footage, and then you'll have your Garmin folder, which actually contains uh, the G-Metrics footage. Now, I'll say G-Metrics uh, without those two here. I did that to, again, try and desync the footage, but that apparently didn't work. And then uh, what we need to find is that one clip, I mean that one file from that time we were flying. So that would be at 551, it would be this one file. It's going to contain all the information again for all 19 of those clips. So I'll press open here. It says, uh, hey, this is the data, this is the map we use. We can actually use uh, Bing or Google Maps. You can switch that up here in your settings. So we'll use this log, and everything is synced up fine, but you'll notice this icon here is blue right now. What that means is it's actually loading the data onto the file itself right now. So if we actually go to Overlay, 
and we press default, it's not going to show up right away because it's still loading everything up. So we'll just give that a second and it should just pop right on. So now you can see all of our data has been applied to it, but it's actually really hard to see. And in fact, we're also missing some information here. So what we'll do is we'll actually go to templates here and we'll switch to maybe something that's more uh, friendly to aviation. So we can see uh, we have a bunch of presets here that are already made. Um, we can just sort of cycle through these. They have different sort of indicators and gauges that are pulling up different types of stats. So for now, we'll just start with this default one because it's easy to read and it's kind of nice and clean. Um, however, my heart rate monitor that I was wearing is not part of this default template. So what we can do here is we can go to gauges here and we can look through all of these gauges. Some of them are specific to specific Garmin devices. Um, not all of them are going to work with what's built into our onboard Garmin device. In fact, actually altitude for some reason doesn't work. We'll need to pull in a gauge that says elevation. So for now, we'll take a look for a heartbeat sensor. We have a lot of different choices here. I actually particularly like this one. I think it's pretty cool. It has a really cool animation. But I kind of want to show something that actually shows my heart rate throughout the duration of the event. So we'll find that under graphs. We'll just pull in this one. Hopefully it's simple enough. Uh, we can see here there was a big spike at some point, but we're over here. It's getting calm into the ride. Something happens here that kind of uh, boosts my excitement. So we'll just check that out. And again, we need something that shows elevation. You'll see that as soon as we drag it in, even though it's a different color here, it takes the color scheme that we have down here. In fact, if we wanted to change this color scheme to something a little less blue, if we wanted it to be maybe uh, black, we can do that. But actually, we want to keep that white. We'll keep those little symbols white. We'll keep the accent. Uh, we can just swap some of these, see how that changes. But again, we'll keep that sort of white. But if we want to change the majority of color here, we can just change the background color. If we want to make it more transparent, uh, we can do that. If we want to make it more opaque, we can do that. Um, so let's do this 60% one. Actually, that's a little hard to read. Yeah, we'll just keep this blue color for now. If I wanted to keep this set up here, again, we have our map in the upper right. We have all our information here. Uh, I actually do want something that shows my G-forces a little different, just because I, I wanted to actually show the, the decimal points. This G-force sensor will only show uh, increments of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'll just quickly switch out uh, G-force here. This one has little decimal points. I think this is going to do what we want it to do. And uh, let's say we want to get rid of that. We'll drag this one down. Uh, okay. And then we'll just sort of save this template as um, helicopter demo temp. Just create template. And now our template's saved, and uh, we can actually play this. Let's see, we have uh, the roll data here. And we have my heart rate uh, sort of up and right here. We have the elevation that we're currently at. Uh, we're showing miles and miles per hour instead of knots. Thing that's a little bit annoying it's really hard to scrub through your footage you kind of actually have to just drag your mouse without clicking anything to go over things if you want to drag to preview this little thing uh, it just kind of stops it when you left click if you try and click down here it'll actually move the clip a little inconvenient so there was a section here where we we're trying to keep a speed of 100 knots you can kind of see when we uh, do the math it, it roughly goes to about 123 miles per hour we're not too far off from that, and are sort of trying to keep it at 100 knots. It might not have been completely accurate, but it stays relatively close, and I have to say, if uh, we actually probably did this math, it probably would be spot on. Again, we're seeing our pitch. Uh, I have a handheld mount here, so it's a little weird. And if we were pulling data from the actual uh, Garmin device on the helicopter itself, we can actually pump in more accurate data. Uh, and it can actually provide uh, more information, such as like RPMs, uh, torque, just a bunch of information I can't get from just the camera alone. Again, we continue to see our elevation, we can see our heart rate here, and where we are on the map. If we wanted to, on the fly, we can actually switch to different overlays if we wanted something a little more uh, fancy. We can actually just keep playing things and just simply press on different things. And again, it's going to be able to change some of these uh, color templates on we're going to be able to customize a lot of these different things however we want. Um, and as long as we don't press save, we can always go back to the original here. In this section, you'll be able to see uh, just the G-forces that are being sort of pulled as we're doing these really tight turns here. So again, uh, I must not chose the right G-force indicator, so it will only show in increments of uh, ones and zeros here. So if I wanted to swap this one out, again, we'll go back up to gauges. We'll do something that has a decimal point here. 
Uh, none of these seem to be doing what we want to do. Actually, these ones will be perfect. Uh, they're not as fancy here, but just for demonstration purposes, just start this over again. And just see the G's that are being uh, experienced on the camera just as a whole into this. And uh, again, just anywhere we go into this, we're going to have a vast amount of information across all different resolutions, all in one easy file. Again, it's relatively easy to show this data, to display this data, but uh, currently I really only have one way of exporting it. I'm sure there's ways we can read into that .fit file and export that for things like After Effects or Premiere, but for now we're going to say this clip is perfect and I want to export it, so we'll just choose one of these clips at 16 by 9 here. Because uh, if we do a 1440 uh, export, I've had this cutting out because we're not actually rendering it at uh, 1920, even though 1440 should be 1920 by 1440, so it should be loading out all of this stuff, but it's not. It's actually clipping the edges. I guess that, that's right, because this is technically 19 wide, so it would cut out right there if we export at 1980 by 1440. So we'll actually just go to this clip here. Uh, we have all the information we want here, and uh, yeah, we're, we're going to delete all this and then go to export. And uh, just real quick, if uh, before we export it, we can actually take this footage here where we actually filmed at 120 frames per second. Uh, we can actually just go to editing and quickly change the speed to 25%. And uh, we'll just play this back right here. We'll actually turn the volume all the way down. And uh, you can just see just at 120 uh, frames a second, slow down to 25%. That's playing back now at 30 frames a second, so we just have a ton more information. If we actually just switch this back up to 100%. Just play it, you'll see how fast they're actually playing. Go back down to 25. It's just really super smooth, but we're filming this at 720p, so there's some aliasing issues um, to be aware of, but still pretty cool. I seem to be pretty excited about it at 143 BPM. So anyway, we'll delete this, and we'll just set this one clip up to export. It's got our little spot on the map during our trail here. So we can actually share it directly to any of these social media networks, but I want to go to export in hopes that I'll have a bunch of options. However, I really don't have many options here. I can just basically choose a resolution. I could choose a frame rate since this clip was actually filmed in 60 frames per second. We'll export at 60 frames a second. And I'll just choose to save this on my desktop. I'll just select that there. Press export. As it's exporting, we're actually baking in all of that uh, Gmetrics data on top of the video. Again, uh, I'm hoping in the future I'll be able to take that .fit file and find a way to feed that information into other programs, but for now, this is really the only way to get that data and share it out with other people, uh, which isn't a bad way. It's really fast and simple and easy. That What you saw, we had a lot of customizable options. Just with the camera alone, we're actually picking up a ton of data, G-Force, elevation, speed, uh, GPS location, and then when you just start tacking on Garmin devices such as um, foot pods or heartbeat sensors or um, OB, what is it, uh, onboard dashboard devices, um, those will Bluetooth right into the camera and you can get all of that more specific information, say on your car, if you wanted to see like transmission data. I, I don't really know what would be specific for a car, but you can find a lot of accurate information and it will send direct information that's actually being read out right from the car in sync with your video to a subframe sort of category, which is great. So everything is in sync with what you were recording to the uh, to the data being sent to it. And you can see we have all of our data here. Quality uh, is not far off from the original video that we shot. There's uh, my little shadow. Um, I probably could have deleted this little burn-in. I think that was part of our template here since we used one of their templates. Uh, you can just see my heart rate coming down, our GPS location. So yeah, this is a, a really cool way um, to share a lot of the information we don't normally get when we're just filming regular action camera stuff or stuff we try and sort of uh, fake in or, or show in some other way or use a third-party app. This is all baked into the camera. It's really easy and it's super accurate. So anyway, that's our quick look at the Garmin Verb edit portion of this quick look uh, and all the gauges and all the geometrics data. If you guys are interested in uh, more Garmin Verb video footage, we'll be having a bunch of comparisons side by side. We'll be having quick looks of both the XC and X that you can check out. Uh, be sure to check out markhawk.cam or hit me up on youtube.com forward slash markhawk. We also have a Patreon page that you can check out and donate to because a lot of this stuff is being paid right out of my pocket and I need to start saving up for some important things. So uh, maybe we can make a stretch goal of reaching $10 by the week's end. Uh, anyway, if you can't donate anything, be sure to press that like or share button. Those help me immensely. It helps me reach the top of the search results when you guys are looking for videos. So anyway, 
I'm Mark Hawk. Appreciate you guys checking out this video up to this far. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all out there. Have a good one.